Hey, we're gonna start with some basics and then move to slightly advanced stuff. You choose the temple, then the difficulty. The game randomly generates the round, you go through the different rooms and kill everything that moves, while trying not to be pierced, crushed, kidnapped by UFO, or trying not to die from old age while waiting for plague bringers. The most important thing in this game's combat is managing your stamina. You restore one stamina point for killing an enemy, two stamina points for a successful parry, and one stamina point for a perfect dodge. The dodge is perfect if you've managed to escape enemy's attack or a trap at the last moment. If you successfully parry a melee hit, you will stagger an enemy and weaken its defenses. Shields provide more frames for parrying. You should keep in mind that you will receive more damage if you stay in a darkness. This is where your trusty friend the torch comes to play. It spreads the light and joy around you. Okay, so there are different types of damage. There is poison, which deals damage over time. There is fire, which deals damage over time, spreads the light and ignites certain surfaces and objects. If a character is poisoned, burning damage will be increased. You can also shoot through fire sources like a brazier to add fire damage to a projectile. There is lightning, which applies shock. If you will do a finisher, it will summon a lightning strike to anything which was shocked. There is also dark damage, which adds more poison damage to poison characters, weakens burning enemies and summons a lightning strike to all shocked characters even without a finisher. All purple weapons have dark damage. If you are burning, then simply roll to extinguish the flames. If you are poisoned, then your stamina regenerates much slower and the only option is to suffer. In Curse of the Dead Gods you will have three primary stats, constitution, dexterity and perception. Each point of constitution gives you plus 50 to max health, dexterity increases your damage by 2% for each point, and every point of perception gives plus 5% to your treasure find. Treasure is considered to be gold found on the ground or in the jars, and also items dropped by the killed enemies. After a few runs you will be able to buy blessings. Those goodies give you permanent bonuses for the entire run. To get the access to blessings you will need crystal skulls. You get them by freeing enemies from shackles of their mortal existence or by going through special events on the mission selection screen. Let's talk about primary resources. Those are gold and corruption. Someone said that it's better to make friends than to make enemies, but not in this game. Here enemies can become a really good source of your income. You're well aware that blind materialism is the path to misery, so you're trying to help them by taking their stuff. You can greatly improve this process by maintaining the grid kill timer. If you start the fight, you will have a short time window. Each kill without being hit will increase the amount of gold you get from the next enemy you kill. Obviously, if you get hit or wait too long, the grid kill timer resets to zero. To prolong the timer, you need to simply hit an enemy, do a perfect dodge or successfully parry an attack. Another primary resource besides gold is corruption. Every time the bar hits 100, you will be afflicted by a random curse. Most curses have positive and negative sides to them, except for the Shadow Word. Shadow Word sucks. In the temple you will stumble upon the altars, where you can buy relics, stats or weapons. You may use gold, but if you haven't been born in upper middle class family, chances are you won't have a lot of savings. In this case, you may donate your blood to the sick kids of the cursed temple, and obviously be rewarded for that with an item you want, and extra portions of corruption. Now let's talk about secondary resources. Crystal skulls are used to buy blessings, divine favors and upgrades to starting weapon choices. I would highly recommend to spend skulls on all blessings first and then go for other stuff, but you do you. If you defeat the last boss of each exploration you'll get jade rings and a blood emblem. Rings are used to unlock new weapons for your future runs, blood emblems are needed to get access to higher difficulties. Corruption can be seen only as a bad thing at the first glance, but there's more to it. Yes, yeah, spying a really good item with your blood at the beginning, or using relics which increase your damage based on gold, or weapons which scale from more curses. But hear me out. Crown of the Cursed King. Trust me, reaching its conditions faster will make you feel so good. And if you get more than one of those... There's also a non-confirmed thing, which I've noticed. On average, the more curses I had, the more likely cursed weapons and relics were appearing at the altar. Next, 
knowing how to parry properly will significantly increase the clear speed, on top of making most boss fights way easier. You can cancel attack frames with a parry and then immediately continue your devastating attack. Learning how to parry could be frustrating. In this case I would recommend doing one run without a parry, then one run trying to parry, then one run without a parry and so on. Or you can just pick up the shield and spam charge until you beat all content without any effort. There are hidden rooms which you can gently open with a heavy weapon. If you don't have one, then before exterminating everyone, I would recommend to explore the room first to see if there's anything behind walls. The reason is that you can bait some enemies to do a dirty job for you and give you the access to hidden treasures. Some traps can also help. Do not neglect the grid kill timer. It can potentially become the main source of your wealth, on top of forcing you into fighting all the time, which is kinda risky, but also satisfying. You'll have to adapt much quicker and it will either improve your skills faster or it will make you rage quit. You should know that all weapon types have generic ways to guarantee a crit. For swords, for example, just spam the attack, where every fourth attack will become a finisher, which will do a crit. Claws will crit if you do a charge attack. Maces don't have a generic way to crit, you can get it only through specific affixes on the weapon. Throwing weapons crit during finishers. For pistols, you have to do a perfect shot. The line of a projectile lightens up right before the end. This is the time when you need to pull a trigger. Shields don't have a generic way to crit, but doing off-head combo increases the damage dealt by the shield and pushes enemies further. Off-head combo is when you attack with the weapon in a main hand and before doing a finisher, you switch to your off-hand attack. Any dagger hit in the back of the enemy will crit including finishers, charged attacks, off-head combos. Whips crit during finishers. Spears always crit if you hit an enemy with the tip of the weapon. Notice that I backed away a little bit, so that my next hit starts with the tip of the spear again. This little trick will make crits more consistent. Heavy weapons like two-handed swords and hammers crit during finishers, and bows crit by performing a perfect shot. You can also do a quick step right after any shot, and this quick step won't cost any stamina. Oh, you can also get unique boss weapons. To do so, you will have to 